In this video, I'm going to be breaking down and ranking every single secondary character in the game right now in Star Wars Shatterpoint. They're my rankings. I don't care if you disagree. Hey guys, Rich from Rich Mid Gaming. Hope everyone is doing fantastic. Well, and yes, uh, to carry on in the series that we are doing, as I mentioned, it's six or nine-ish or so months since the game was released. We've had a huge number of additional characters uh, come out for the game. Uh, I did the primaries last week. Most of you, for the most part, agreed with me. There was one guy who really loves the Grand Inquisitor, um, but that's fine. As I say with these all of the time, they are just opinions, and indeed opinions are like arseholes. Everyone has them, and the vast majority of them are full of shit. And on that note, that's a pretty good segue to introduce Mr. Quinn Duggan. Quinn, welcome back. It's been a minute. How the hell are you doing? I, I feel a bit like Withers from Baldur's Gate. I feel like my tomb <laughs> has been disturbed and I've been like called forth to like, you know, serve once more in the grand scheme. The great army needs you. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, it's been a minute. It's been a minute, Quinn, since you've been on. Um, not That's not that we haven't been doing lots of stuff. We've been playing lots of games, haven't we, lately? Yeah. Um, we've got bored of Old World very quickly. <laughs> I mean, I knew it was going to happen. Like. And we've been playing quite a bit of MCP and Shatterpoint lately, especially yeah. Shatterpoint with all of the lovely, lovely new characters that we have no, they, uh, they just won't got stop to releasing them, will they? they? I mean, Jesus, I can't keep up. It's, uh, yeah, it's been a bit of a pain. Um, so what we're also going to do in this video is there are three two characters i think on this list no there's one character on this list that came out recently the death trooper escort uh, so we will do a little bit more of a breakdown and go into his character a little bit more um but you know because the rest of them we've done before you guys know about them um but what we're doing quinn we're taking a look at all of the secondaries in the game um you know they they play a vital role and it always I always get a bit confused with the secondaries because there are so many secondaries that are support in my mind. <laughs> but then we, we we also have the title of support in the game, so it gets a little bit confusing. Um, but some of these secondaries on the list, Quinn, hit as hard, in some cases, a little bit harder than some of the primaries that we've got in the game as well. Oh, um, you know, you've always got Luminara there to drag down the bar. <laughs> Um, so we're going to be ranking them S through D because that's how you rank things, guys. Um, S tier is going to be absolutely amazing. Um, they're going to be a staple of their given faction. Now, we know there are no factions in this game, but you do have the keywords like Galactic Republic, Galactic Empire, Separatist, so on and so forth. So we're really going to be comparing, especially when we get to something like uh, Galactic Republic, where there's lots of secondaries to choose from, they will be ranked against their other secondary characters as well. Uh, so S is going to be absolutely amazing, probably the best, uh, not only the best for their faction, but just amazing overall. A tier is going to be very, very solid. B tier, guys. And Queen, I think some people sometimes get a bit confused with B tier. Like B tier for me is a perfectly balanced character with no problems. Like that's it's it's literally yeah, like, the middle of the bell curve, isn't it? It's like perfectly serviceable. <laughs> it's just that because there are characters to either side of them, they very often get overlooked in this kind of video. I guess yes, just because yeah, th there aren't as many talking points about something that is just balanced and D tier. Yeah, um, C tier is going to be kind of quint that category of like you know, let's take. Um, um, Galactic Republic again, for example, you know, there might be what is the like three or four, um, four points that you can pick and choose from. It might be that they're, they're absolutely fine, but actually there are just some better options out there that kind of do the same thing or they're the same point cost. So there may be something better. And then D tier uh, is reserved for at least one, maybe only one character 
in this list, actually, Quinn. Uh, oh, but it's I going feel to be. Like we should give that character a tier below. D. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Um, we already said, didn't we? The the number in her name is how many tiers below D she should be. Um, <laughs> spoiler alert! But D two is really going to be. Look, do not touch. Right now, not viable in the game. But it's also worth pointing out, Quinn, isn't it, that there are lots of things that can happen in a game like this that all of a sudden makes a character more viable, right? Another, you know, and that's not just erratas on their card. It can be another box being released. It can be another mission set up where it's slightly different. So just because we don't think they're good now, if in six months' time we go, this character's really good, we're putting them in S tier. I, I doubt it, but if that does happen, don't be then going, oh, well, you said things it's like things change. It's a living game. It's a living rule book. Um, and the tiniest little changes can have a really big impact. So, Quinn, um, without further ado, let's start off. And we're going to be covering all of the Galactic Republic characters first, just because there is more of them uh, than any other reason. So let's start off with everyone's favourite Padawan. I mean, there is only two to choose from in this, and she is definitely my favourite of the... <laughs> she is definitely my favourite of the two. Um, Padawan Ahsoka Tano, probably timely, because a lot of people that maybe missed out on uh, the promotion um, have now managed to get their hands on Ahsoka Tano. Um, she comes in a pretty good box, actually. Like, you know, yeah. it's not it's not a bad box at all. Um, she's a four-cost, Um she lets a Galactic Republic primary unit or a Jedi, so or a Jedi primary unit, uh, dash, which is nice. So a little bit of synergy with Luke in mm -hmm. there as well. Um, she is fearless. She has the really cool thing that she gets to use that twice. I, um, I hate the name of that uh, ability so much. <laughs> she, is she is fearless. Um, she is fearless. Def yeah, deflect, standard. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. For me, the one that I really like, Quinn, is getting ahead of yourself against Snips. Reactive ability. Uh, when a Galactic supporting a Galactic Republic supporting unit within range three makes a combat action, um, she gets to jump and may make a five dice uh, attack. But it's got to be targeting um, one of the same characters who were attacked during the attack action. So um, eight two, like pretty standard I mean, stat line there for for, for yeah. a. For a like, second, for a second, at its worst, getting ahead of yourself again, re remove a pin, or just get yourself onto a point. Like the, you don't always need to gun for that attack, right? Oh, I mean, if if she's on your back line and you've just moved up a a, a two twelve or a half or whatever, and they're doing a ranged attack, um, just getting that jump and getting her off that back line. And either up some terrain, and you know, if you're very lucky, you've got a little bit of uh, an, a, a, a I know I said inception point then. That's not the right terminology for it. Well, you just an, walk over there and start spinning it top. <laughs> an ingress point, you can get really far. Quinn, for me, if I ever play Galactic Republic, irrespective of the um, the primaries that I take, she is usually in the mix of I'm probably going to be taking her. Just because yeah. personally, I really like her. I like that she gets up close and personal. She's got some really good support. Um, so I'll I'll do the first one first, and then you can give yours, and we'll discuss. For me, she's probably going in A tier. I don't quite think she's S. I don't think she has enough to be S tier. And she might not end at the top of A tier. She may get pushed down a couple of, of bumps. But for me, I think she's very, very good A tier for me. Yeah, I'd agree on A tier. I think, like, Within the confines of Galactic Republic, there is probably one secondary that is like higher in the ranks for contention. Uh, and as we get onto them, we'll talk about them. But I think because yeah. of that, that then bumps her down into way. It does, yeah, because we have to take that into consideration because it's 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 not like other games, is it? You are very very limited on you know you can only take two secondaries. That is it, right? There's there's no other choice. That's all you get. Um. Okay, so we've had one Padawan Quim. Let's, and that's not bad. That is, um, that is a an agreement on the first one. Um, and can we have a? Can we bring the alphabet game into Shatterpoint? Are we allowed to do this? 
Are we allowed I, I don't know. to do? do? Do we need to do like the Oravesh alphabet for this? Like, God no. Okay. On, <laughs> on to Baris. To each of the tears with the Oravesh. On to Baris. On to Barry. Um, <laughs> so Barry, another four point, uh, another four cost. Sorry. Um, she comes in the box with Luminara, um, which Luminara is seeing a lot more play now. I think. I think people are starting to find. Some stuff. That, I know you're not a fan. Uh, mm. She's not. She's not aggressive enough, which is why we don't like to play her. But she's not um, a Quinn character. No. <laughs> um, she's a Force user, Galactic Republic Jedi Padawan. Like it, it's pretty, pretty standard. She doesn't have um, terrorist on her card, which um, she most definitely should have. Um, but there we go. Um, she's got some pretty good stuff. She has got some pretty good stuff. Force speed for one is very nice. Slip away, situational, but can help you retain another point, maybe. Um, Faithful Padawan is is okay. It's the most joke of a title ever to give the woman that blew up the Jedi Temple and then blamed Ahsoka, but we've been into that before. For me, Queen, one of the things that kind of differentiates um, uh, Barry from a lot of the other secondaries is that guaranteed force push so being able to always get your opponent off a point it does cost two force though i was gonna say guaranteed is a bit of a stretch isn't it like well the guaranteed is in force or all the way down the tree like yeah so it was it was more of like a, a guaranteed as in like in a clutch moment where you need it to come into play you know you've done your attack you've whiffed you haven't got a push she has that in her back pocket, which I do think it's, gives it's guaranteed her guaranteed in the sense it's diceless control, right? Diceless control, yes, is what I was is what I was getting at. Um, and also mention how fast she is because if she doesn't fast. get to the end of that uh, playbook, it's not called a playbook in this game, but that's what it's, it's called, called a stance card. Stance card, <laughs> combat, combat tree, well, play combat goal, tree, everyone. yeah, combat um, tree, yeah. Like you get to the end of that, that is a reposition jump potentially advance after the fact. Yeah. Like that's well, not bad. Or Quinn, that force push for free. And then, you know, the force push doesn't necessarily need to be against that same target. So you're shoving one character four times, then potentially yeeting another character range three after the fact. Yeah, and and the amount of maneuverability you get with four pushes is crazy, right? Because the angles that you can go at, you can end up in a very, very different place. Or if you don't want to move, you can push them away and you just stay where you are. You don't have to follow up. Um, I my, my, my opinion of her, Quinn, has gone up as a character, but, but she is up against some stiff, stiff competition in Galactic Republic. And I think... For me, that is that's probably, and in fact, well, it's probably why I'm going to rank her a little bit lower than what maybe some people think. But I'll let you go first, Quinn, and I'll, I'll say where where I am. I'm putting her. Well, there's one more point I want to kind of comment on before I give uh, this evaluation, which is the survivability of Barry, which is very low. Eight health, four range defense. Not particularly good expertise. Uh, it's great for the reposition that you get off it, but yep. in terms of actually blocking damage coming in, not great. Uh, and yeah. I think because of that, I I view that almost as a liability in a sense. And because of that, for me, she's a C tier. Yeah, and and the fact that she doesn't have any reactive "you shoot me" abilities either, right? So. Whereas with other characters, you may be deterred a little bit from shooting them. Um, C tier is where I was putting her. For in in my mind, I think feeling like she's, you know, sort of top end of C tier in terms yeah. of you know where she will ultimately end up. Um, but I think that is a, I think that is a fair fair place for her. Uh, okay, CC two two four clone commander Cody. Um, two, two, so two, four. Oh, sorry, two, 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 four. Um, you worked hard to earn that extra two. <laughs> um, comes obviously with a two twelve and Obi Wan. Um, I mean, we've got a big problem. Is apt. Um, so he's a four yeah. cost. Um, my my problem, or one of my biggest problems with him is because actually he's he's got some decent damage output and things like that. Um, but that tactic ability is useless, or, or almost useless in the first round, unless you unless you use somebody else's 
tactic to move Cody up, which there are so many Jedi's that you want to actually yeah. move up the board, and he isn't. Who one do of you them. want to move more, Cody or Anakin? <laughs> yeah, I really like my sharpshooter characters, Quinn, to have some really nice. I'd rather defensive maneuver would have been um, run and gun. gain gain yeah run and gun gain a focus with it instead of the hunker token uh, would have and that alone I think would have upped my um, my opinion of him significantly because then he's getting into the gar territory in terms of the damage yeah. output that he can that he can do um, and because of that I don't I don't quite think Quinn that he is all the way down in D tier, but I think he is low end of C tier. Um, yeah. Um, the, the requirement for the supports to have a hunker on Bring It Down as well just really builds on that weird over-reliance Grand Army of the Republic have yep. on hunker tokens when that whole thing is kind of linked to one primary. Yes. Which isn't great. It, yeah, I mean, you almost can't play Cody without Obi Wan, but then you look at it and go, there are so many other people that Obi Wan wants to be taking over Cody. Again, like I've played with him and he's done some good work, but I think there were just so many more consistent yeah. characters out there. And again, I'm also not overly fond of that combat tree, to be honest. Like... No, I mean, let's have a quick look at that, Quinn, because it isn't. It, it's. You're not getting a shove until three. I mean, two damage, you know, three damage very easily on one expertise and one success. Yeah. Is okay. How much but, is three damage really helping you against like yeah. the majority of characters in the game? Yeah. So I think for me, Quint, I'm I'm looking at a at bottom end of C tier. Where where are you where are you thinking? Uh I would potentially argue for a D for Cody because Ooh. I genuinely believe that he is in need of some form of update to be viable. Like, that, and that's kind of the thing that puts the character into D for me is they need to be actively fixed. And I yeah. don't think he is actively fixed in the same way as someone like Barry where maybe there's a release that makes them good. I think there just needs to be... His a inherent back. tech just isn't very good is it um no. you know he's got the potential but it, he struggles to get there i think he once he's in position and if he can stay stood where he is focus and shoot then he's all right but that you know that takes an entire turn to really do that so and in a game like yeah. Shadow point where the objectives change every struggle yeah I, and, sure you could be stood there for like you know the entire struggle one and then it's not active for the rest of the game you're gonna have to move at some point well, and also in a game that is really, let's be honest, more zonal control than it is attrition, right? That that yeah. you don't... I don't know about you, Quinn. I've never won a game of Shatterpoint by dominating my opponent and defeating them, as in taking every character off the board. It just doesn't I, happen I, I, in this I've, game. I've never seen a tabling, let alone, like, conducted a tabling in this game. No. No, not at all. Not at all. Um... Okay, Quinn, let's move on to the second of our clone commanders. Um, Commander Wolf. Wolf? Wolf. Oh, yeah, it is me, Wolf. It is me, Wolf. CC3636. Again, another four threat. Four threat. I always say threat. Another four cost. Pretty standard. 9-2, I do like as well. Um, yeah. Flank them. Um, I like this because there is no range on it which is really nice, and it is a climb. Now, a climb allows you to finish a dash movement at the same or higher elevation. So you don't actually need to make a climb with a climb, um, yeah. but when you've got those situations, Quinn, where there's terrain really close to your deployment edge and there isn't an ingress point, it's just really nice to be able to just allow them to move up. Um and it's an allied clone trooper unit. It isn't just a supporting unit, which I do like yeah. as well. Um, it's more limited in that it's a clone trooper rather than Republic. It's but yeah, yeah. You're getting a higher benefit out of it. Yeah, let's be honest. Like there are not many clones that are going to be shouting at Anakin and telling him what to do, right? Like that's <laughs> like that kind of doesn't really happen much. And um, run and gun. I mean, we just sort of said how how good it is. Pack hunter. Um, 
Commander Wolf is a little bit of the sort of. I mean, these guys are more of the sort of melee clones, really, aren't they? Yeah, in they're, terms they're, of, they're the punchy of, clones of what they do. Um, I really like him, Quinn. Like, I really like him. Um, that the 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 modific or the the removal of modification of crits, I think, is not to be underestimated. It's not yeah. quite as good as an expose, but stopping them, just making sure that the crits that you roll, they get through, can be really, really good. Especially when a lot of the clones have got, you know, a, a shove within, you know, one or two successes. Yeah, it, it's an interesting rule because of how much it matters who you're fighting, right? If you're fighting a Dooku, this is incredible. If you're fighting, yeah. like, a Vader, not great. Vader has no crit negation. Yeah. But as far as I'm aware, between the two no. of them, I don't think they have any. No, 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 neither of them do. No, neither of them do. Um, but we are seeing it more and more, right? We've now got secondaries and some supports that have got crit modification, yeah. dice modification in there. So it is quite nice. Um, for me, Quim, I think he's solid. Um, you know, I think he's perfectly fine. For me, um, he isn't, again, he isn't my go-to when it comes to Galactic Republic, but somebody running him, I wouldn't be like, hmm, maybe they don't know what they're doing. So for me, Quinn, middle of the road, perfectly fine, perfectly serviceable, B tier, I think. Yeah, I, I find it quite hard to argue with that. To be fair. Like, I think he's almost the epitome of a B tier character, isn't he? Like, cut, turns up, does a good job, a little bit situational, has some nice action economy let's call it with the with yeah. the dash and the focus i think is is really nice so yeah b b tier sounds sounds good to me quinn um okay let's get on to a character who i do very much like taking when i am playing galactic republic um the first of our core box characters quinn and yep. it's crazy isn't it sometimes isn't it how we, we see it in many games where there is let's, just... Let's be honest, this is the Zemo of Shatterpoint, right? This is the Zemo of Shatterpoint, yeah. There's one other in the in the core box who is, I would say, as good as. But for me, Quinn, he just... He epitomises what you need in Galactic Republic. He's got yeah. so much um, out-of-activation movement for other characters. Uh, he's got out-of-activation movement for himself with I'm Always First Kid. Bring it on, Clankers, is just crazy. Like absolutely it's so good crazy. For your action economy. Like. Yeah, you know, just getting rid of those conditions and things like that. That or just taking away some of that chip damage. Um, he's no slouch when it comes to to damage himself as well. I mean, on his, his combat guns, tree, he uses the exact same model of gun as Wolf, but his shoots a whole range further for some reason. Well, he's just a little bit better, isn't he? You can just see that a little bit further. Uh, maybe he knows how to solve the drop. Is the drop off in blaster pistols like there are in bows and arrows? Maybe. I doubt you know it. it is? It's because he's got the custom helmet where he's still got like the phase one visor. He gets yeah. better coverage. Exactly, exactly. Um, for me, Quinn, he is solid, absolutely solid. I'm going to see where you put him first and then I will give my agreement or my counter argument as to where i think he should be so in my opinion rex is the epitome of what a secondary should be in this game and i think it's quite fitting that he is from the core box because yeah that's where you kind of want to set the base groundwork of what something should be um and because of that i, I can't put him anywhere other than s like he's just so good Specifically he's... within the confines of Republic, <clears throat> you are not going to find anyone better in Republic, and even outside of Republic, he is battling the other people that are best in show for each of the quote unquote it's, factions. It's fair. Right? Yeah, it's really fair. Um, I think because I think there's going to be a couple of S tiers, um, two maybe maybe three in total that that are in there, um, and I think for me it's probably lower down. And, and is he lower down the S tier? I don't yeah, think he'll think be the he top of the S tier. Um, bottom of S tier because he is kind of confined by that faction he's in, right? 
Yeah, he, there Combined is no and defined, right? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, but yeah, he's very, very good. Um, d- does so much work. Um, and like I say, I mean, the the the, the S and the A T are there for me are the two that I'm generally running um, with, you know, and and there's a three cost support that make it so much easier to do now. Um, you know, really, the only time you can't take for me, the only time I wouldn't take both of them is when I couldn't if I was running Mace Windu. But that's you know just a a limitation of the of the points in the uh, in the game. Um, okay, rounding out the at least clone side of things, CT four one one Commander Pons is um, is the is the, the three threat or the three cost option for uh, for these guys. So there are some situations where we just mentioned Mace Windu. I mean. Maybe when Yoda comes out, that means that he'll bring another three cost support with him as well. Maybe, maybe yeah, not. Yeah, maybe but... like agree. Yeah, um, but you know, so so he he has a role to play, uh, which can be which can be really nice. You know, things like the incoming are, are really good because I mean, you can it's have better than Cody's buff. <laughs> it's better than Cody's buff. Yeah. Um, again, he's got the he's got the charge. Um, She's another Galactic Republic character. It is on the character, right? It's not the unit, but it's also it's a three he cost. can't target himself, right? Yeah, he can't target himself because it is another, but three cost versus four cost. That's the kind of trade-offs that you've got there. Um, it's funny that he's a forward scout, but for me, it's like he's staying on that bat point. Like you ain't putting him up there. Um, so he does get to deploy um within range two rather than range one of the squad's primary, um, which, again, is fine. Um, for me, Quinn, again, like, he's got a... He has a job that nobody else can do in Galactic Republic. Um, so I think that, you know, bumps him up a little bit. But for me, perfectly fine, perfectly serviceable for a for a three cost. Um, yeah, I mean, th- there's a big trade you make when you bump down to that three cost when you consider Ponzi's arguably less survivable than your supports yep. because he doesn't have the defensive maneuver so he's not got an easy access to hunker outside of taking a full action for it yeah um i yeah he, he's he's all right personally I, i'd go beneath barry but oh beneath barry that's just me yeah. see i was i, I, think... I, I was going to go I was going to go above Barry purely because he enables Windu, right? If you want to play, I mean, so if you want to play Windu, you don't have to play him, but you are playing him if you, if you have Windu. So he has, he has a defined role for himself that nobody else can do right now. So if you want to play Windu, who let's be honest, is a very good character. um, You have to take him, him with you. Um, I do almost feel a bit like how good Windows is almost balanced by the fact that you have to take pawns. You um, have to take this club with him, yeah. So, yeah. And then rounding out, Quinn, the Galactic Republic is going to be Sib, Royal Bodyguard. Another four threat. Um, less synergy, like, you know, very, very similar things, but with Handmaiden rather than, you know, clone troopers. Um Bodyguard is is quite nice. Um, you know, just, just brings a little bit of Magna Guard tech in there. Nine two. Um, the loyal protectors. Um, it's the fact that it has to be towards an allied primary character is a bit like it can be a little bit annoying at times. You don't it get that full flex. Early pull, right? Yes. Yeah. Exactly that. Whereas a lot of the times with these supports sorry, with the secondaries that are a little bit more support-focused and getting people around, you, they're often your optimal first pulls of the game because they're doing a lot of the moving and shaking, allowing you to score, you know, not only your back point, but, you know, a couple of other points as well. Um, so, yeah, um, Expo's flank is is fine. She does have that action economy, yeah. force economy with having... Um, Focus action, and she gets to do the climb, so I do like that. Um, yeah, I mean, it's fine. Like, she's fine. 
is all right. Like, I, I do like the fact that Bodyguard applies to herself as well, so she's effectively got a near permanent boost to her own defense. She does. Does make her that little bit more survivable with the nine health as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, you, let, let's be honest. You're only taking Sabe if you're taking Padme, right? You're only taking Sabe if you're taking Padme. Yeah. But I actually think. You know, if you look at what Sabe does, like you say, she's that that nine two with that almost always on cover, right? Is is really nice. Her combat tree is not much. You know, a, a combat tree and what she does is not to be sniffed at either, right? Seven yeah. five range, six five melee, range four. Um, you know, shove on a one. That's it's something I love to see. Shove on a one for me is always something that's really good. Access to three shoves in total. Um, and not bad damage output. For me, Quinn, perfectly fine, perfectly serviceable. Probably just B tier. Like, yeah, B tier. Yeah, I think like, probably below Wolf, just because Wolf is more widely applicable. Yeah, com- completely agree. Completely agree. Um, okay, Quinn, we're going to go kind of as a... We're going to use someone out that's come out of hiding as a little bit of a segue between the Galactic Republic and then going into our next ones, but it is... Obi-Wan Kenobi out of hiding. Um, he has no affiliation. He is a Force user and he is a Jedi. He costs four. Uh, he's an 8-2. He's got some quite nice stuff though, Quinn. Um, run that for nice me. nice is one word for it. Egregious is another one, would you say? <laughs> Unbalanced. <poorly laughs> Unbalanced, Unbalanced uh, is maybe words another word. Throw in there. Um, it's probably worth as Quinn. We've done it before, but it's always worth, especially for new players that haven't seen our videos before, probably always worth just... Run is a very, very difficult tactic to understand because AMG don't do England good. Um, <laughs> one, one, no, they, they speak American. <laughs> so run is at the start of this unit's activation, choose a character in this unit or another allied character that is engaged with an enemy character. The chosen character may heal and reposition. So when we all read that, we were like, okay, so you've got to be engaged. No. You can choose this character. Comma. Comma. Or another character that is engaged. So that's the clarification there. So what does that mean? Um, He gets a free advance when he activates. A free reposition. A reposition, sorry. Yeah. Definitely better. Now, you do have to um, recover, then reposition, because again, it doesn't. even though it doesn't say, and then, you still have to do the reposition last. Um, but it's still pretty good. But So that's very good, Quinn. And then mind trick. I, I hate it so much. Just like, stop it, it and attack. It makes no thematic sense in terms of the range of it. Yeah. Yeah, so... Allied character within three is targeted by attack. You spend two. Um, they don't get to attack, so the attack ends. They get that back if it's their activation. So they can make another attack targeting a different character. But if there is no other character to attack, they have lost that action, right? It is deemed yeah. as the attack has ended. But what's really important about this is, let's say you are a Vader and you have taken some damage, and you're using your leadership, and you then go to make the attack. (laughs) Identity, sorry. Then go to make the attack. The attack ends. You used all of those extra little juicy bits that you had on that first attack. Just because you didn't get to do the attack, well, that's not Obi-Wan's fault. Um, So you don't get any of your extra things on that second attack, and you remove two dice from your dice pool as well. Um... And then he's immune to, he's immune to to expose. He's better than he's better than immune to expose. He heals off it. Yeah, then he heals off it. Yeah, as well. Now you may be thinking, well, why would you ever give him exposed? If sometimes you don't have a it's... choice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you always have a choice, but if you want to go on your tree, you can't skip a part of your combat tree. Um, he's very good, Quinn. Whether we like him or not, like I, I think he's. One of the characters that needs to be toned down. For me, yeah. I'd be happy with Mind Trick being within range three of the enemy character that is yeah, making the, the attack. Attacker, because you're doing the Mind Trick on the person attacking. 
not on the person who's being attacked, because that doesn't yeah. make any sense, <laughs> AMG, does it now? Yeah. Uh, but with all that said and done, Quinn, we do have to rank him. Um, and I think he... he it's, it's, it's a double-edged it's a double edged thing for me. Because he has no affiliation, he can slot in anywhere. It's also yeah, worth mentioning as well that he's, out on anything. <clears throat> he's also multi-era, which is something that we probably do need to kind of incorporate now with this, right? So he's, what, he's got a lot... Why is this guy in the Republic era? Why? <laughs> why? So the guy that at the oh. end of the Galactic Republic um, went into hiding... <laughs> It's almost like we don't have another version of Obi Wan that uh, that already fulfills that job, but he has it, and that's what we have to rank him on. Um, so for me, Quinn, if I think I went first last time, but I think I know where he has to go because he is very good. Yeah, he goes in the shit off and die tier, which is also known as S tier. Now, does he go above Rex? Oh, a hundred percent. Like he yeah. is. Gonna stay very close to the top end of S, if not the top end of S, for the rest of this video. Okay, Quinn. Next up is another secondary from the core box. Um, Kalani, super tactical droid. Um, we've talked about him a lot. He's just so good. He's He has the damage output or one of the highest damage outputs of any of the secondaries, and arguably in his faction, compared to similar characters that do similar things in their faction, has just so much more of an impact. Because not only is he really good, and he can move people around, he can make other people do attacks, and he's boosting everybody else's attack around, not even around him, but board wide, as long as there are two droids within range or two battle droids within range four of a of an enemy, like he's he's really really good. But yeah, there's he's a some, reason Kalani's a five, right? He's a. I was going to say, but it's balanced with him being a five cost, and you have to remember that, right? When we're comparing him to a Pons, for example, right? There's a big difference there in in threat, but. He doesn't, even though he's so good, Quinn, he doesn't feel egregious. It feels like they've made no. a very, very good character, but actually it's not egregious, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, it, it feels like he is worth his points. Like, I don't know what's that. He's just worth his points. He's not cheaper than his points should allow. He's not worse than his points should allow. He's not Aura uh, Yeah, well, yeah. You know, um, and I think, you know, he is, for me, if you're going to play Separatist Alliance, you know, right now you're playing droids. For me, I I find myself not playing a, a Separatist army without him. Um, I really like the CAD Dooku list that I run because it allows me to run uh, the B2s alongside him because he's yeah. a five, the B2s are a four, and then obviously CAD Brain, Bane bringing... Um, uh, bringing uh, nine squad points with him and synergizing so well with what, you know, with what separatists do. Um, I think he's just very, very good, Quinn. Uh, I know you ranked the last one first, so I'll do this one. I think he slots in probably between Rex and Obi-Wan. Yeah. Like, I think he's very much the Rex of the separatists, right? Like he yeah. is the first port of call when you go, oh, what secondary do I need in this list? I'm often going, I want to take Kalani. What combination of primary and support do I need to take to make sure I'm getting yeah. him in? We, um, you've also and, got to factor in Magna Guard, right? Well, I was going to say, Except and he's got access... A lot. <laughs> he's got access to two three-threat supports that he can... Sorry, two three-cost supports that he can choose to bring alongside him. Both of which are not to be sniffed at, right? Even the B ones can dish out. I mean, they're so mobile, right? But they they they're really really good. Um, okay, Quinn. Moving on, then we've not disagreed on much so far. We've only been a, I would say, a half a tier away from each other, which is 
is, yeah, is main, mainly placements within tears. Yeah, which is usually what gets us. But, uh, Kalani's little brother, Kraken, super tactical droid, the four threat version, does a you know does 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 a lot of what uh, Kalani does. The one thing that he doesn't have is the same amount of damage output, but also he loses that board wide plus one dice to attacks, which does add up over a game. Yeah. Um, I don't like running these two together. I did at first because there was some bullshitter you could do. <laughs> and then AMG spoiled my fun. So basically the idea was that you would, uh, let's say you go with Kraken first, you make a, an attack, you trigger tactical network, and then you then choose to attack with Kalani. Kalani attacks, triggers tactical network, and then... But and they a Magda Guard attack. But yeah, no. but they clarified that active abilities, even if you get them on your tree, cannot be triggered outside of that character's activation, which I'm calling bullshit on Quinn. I think they didn't even think about that. And then they saw people trying to do it and went, hmm, that is a little bit broken. Um, so we should probably stop that. Um Maybe we should play more Obi Wan because then they'll like pay attention to how horrible Obi Wan is to play against and fix it. Maybe, maybe. I think he's perfectly fine. I, yeah, he's for me is the middle of the road. Yeah, you know, again, like, he is up against some tough competition in that four threat slot. Very tough. Um, yeah. and and I think that kind of bumps him down a little bit. Um. But yeah, what what do you think, Quinn, in terms of in terms of placement? Well, I mean, he's solid in the middle of the road. That is very much screaming B tier. And in terms of his placement in B tier, I'm going to make one argument in Kraken's defense. Okay. Is, they have one of the coolest names for an ability on a secondary card, like Conqueror's Resolve. It just it invokes a certain something, and I think <laughs> that should be rewarded. And I therefore, mean, it absolutely should be. You know, absolutely should be. Probably a little bump above, say, maybe, maybe even like pushing Wolf out of that top spot in B. I, you know. I mean, I was thinking for me, top end of B. You know, and people have to see this as like this is like the uh, oops, this is like the B plus, right? If you the closer to the letter you are, the the you know the better you are in the in the ranking. So yeah, absolutely no issues with that whatsoever, Quinn. Um. Somebody who ain't BT a Quinn, Django Fett, Bounty mm-hmm. Hunter. Um, so this guy is a separatist. He is a scoundrel, and he's a bounty hunter. So there is a lot of synergy going on there with other characters in the game. Um, he's also a for, great dad. He is. He is a great dad to many. I mean, there are there are plenty of his sons on this board on this tier list already, yeah, Quinn. Look, so look how well like, his son Rex is doing. Look how well his son year. Rex is doing. Yeah, well, he Cody, the son Cody. Cody's like that disappointment, and he's like, God, you see him once at Christmas and you know weddings and funerals, and that's kind of it. If he even gets invited to the wedding, um, the Cody is the rich of the clone family. Yes, <laughs> um, I I love Django Fett. He's for me, Quinn. Showing, a, showing how good a character is when you are playing him in affiliations where he doesn't get a bonus to the synergy, but because he is so good as an individual character, people still choose to take him. Because, um, you know, he kind of falls into that same category for me as, as Obi-Wan, right? You know, he's he's got he's got some affiliations himself, but... He doesn't have anything on his card that is like, if you are in this, you get this. He's reliant on other people to help him out. Um, he but kind you of just see him everywhere. Wolf archetype, right? Yeah. Like he's not reliant on anyone else, and no one else is necessarily reliant on him, right? Yeah. Um, his damage output is okay. He doesn't, you know, he his damage output isn't crazy exceptional. He's not, you know, one shotting Jedi's and things like that. Um, he's got a lot of movability. He's got great action economy with the getting the jump with the focus action. That is just so, so good. Um, but really, Quinn, it's about his, for me, moving around and not so fast. Sorry, and uh, capture wire. 
Um, yeah, capture wire again, not so fast as well as if you can set it up to just be like that character is almost guaranteed dead the moment you activate them. Yeah. So chuck them in reserve for me, why don't you? Like, yeah, they're, they're yeah, just never absolutely. going again. Yeah, has no dice manipulation on his tree, but because he's wearing that Beskar armor, uh, he does have very, very good defensive expertise. You know, one expertise is two, three is three, uh, which is, you know, really nice. Uh, and can trigger his, one of his abilities for free on his combat tree off only three yep. results, which is which is really nice. We're talking a lot about him, Quim. I think he's really good. I don't think, for me, I don't think he does enough to get into the S tier. I think he's, yeah, I, I think... For me, he is above Ahsoka, but at the very top end of A tier. And the reason why is he he doesn't have that... He doesn't do anything for anybody else. All right, time for the first argument of the video. Okay, uh, then. What have you been smoking? Have you, have, have you put something in that cherry Pepsi Max you drink in there? <laughs> have you? A little bit of giggle dust, eh? Because you are having a flat. Django is so, so in S tier. Like, it's not even <laughs> funny. Like, Django is an incredible secondary. Like, the, the only downside Django has is that he's not allowed in any eras other than Republic. Uh, that's because he's dead. I know. <laughs> that's the only thing holding him back from being like just everywhere. Like it's fine. Boba's gonna pick up where Django left off from, so that's fine. I mean, I, I don't know. I feel like Django's just y you can't beat the original Rich. He is the he is the OG. OG. He has to be better than Rex, and I'd argue he is because to be fair. He is probably my most played secondary because... Exactly. He has more impact on a game than some primaries, right? That like is just, true. That is how it works. And you also have to factor in that much like Obi-Wan, he affects the game on turns that aren't his. That is true. That is and very, that very is true indeed. Incredibly powerful in terms of locking your opponent out of certain plays that might, you know, help them retake control of a game. Right, you've you done your thing. You've done the change my mind thing. You've got me there. Um, I just, I was thinking back and I was like, he's won me so many games. Yeah, you so have many to think games. of how many games he's won. Like, I've had games where he's just sat next to three different characters and gone, none of you get to activate, because if you do, <laughs> you're dead. You're going to die. I've also had opponents draw like a character card and go, right, and actively acknowledge, oh, I can't go with them because Django is going to do that to me. They reserve yeah. them. Couple turns later, you know, may maybe it's been like 10, 20 minutes. They completely forget about that factor <laughs> and go, I'll go with this character. Not so fast, buddy. Not so fast. Kaboom. Um, I'm going to slice him in between. He's, he's either side of Kalani, and I don't know which side. I would argue for him being closer to S than Kalani because he. And as you try to argue for A with, he's not dependent on anyone, and therefore he can go anywhere. <laughs> and I think, by virtue of the fact that you can go anywhere with him as a character, that bumps him up just like it bumped up Obi-Wan, right? You've changed my mind. You've changed my mind. I don't know what I was smoking then, Quinn. You've changed my mind. Savage. <laughs> Savage. <laughs> Savage Opress. Um... I I really liked this guy. Now, you know me, Quinn. I've played a lot of Talzin Dathomir. A, a hell of a lot. Um, still ranked number one Talzin player, just saying. Um, and I played him a hell of a lot. He actually doesn't make it into my Talzin list anymore. Does the guy we just ranked make The it? guy we've just ranked does, yes. <laughs> yes. The, the um, it was meant to be A tier, yeah? <laughs> so let's talk about where he fits. So Separatist Alliance, we've already spoke about Django. We've already spoke about Kalani. We've already spoke about Kraken as well, right? Kraken's got some good synergy with everyone as well. 
Um, in Dath the reason I to say I should be running him in Dathomir, the reason I don't is I take Gar and the Mandos, and then I like Django in there. It's probably the wrong way. He 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 does have really good synergy with Talzin especially, um, and actually with the with the Night Sisters. So I think his his real home is probably Dathomir rather than Separatist Alliance. I don't know if you agree with that, Quinn, or yeah, I, I mean, it, it's the pack he comes in, right? Like, he is built for that squad. Like, yeah. You, you'd imagine, conceptually, when they're designing, like, characters, they design them kind of by box and then branch out from there. Uh, I don't um, know. There's a character on here, though. I don't know if they did that with it. <laughs> well, you know, we'll get to them. Um, <laughs> the, the thing I'll say for Savage is he, he's a brick, and bricks have their uses, right? The bricks you know, do you... have their uses. They will go build through a... a window with a little note on. You you can build a house with bricks, but you can't perform surgery with one and expect <laughs> your patient to survive. Um, yeah, he, he, he's, he's just a bit of a sledgehammer. Like, you know, he goes in and he hits things, and he hits them relatively hard for what he is, and he takes a beating pretty well, but he doesn't interact with the game outside of his turn, really. Which yes. is always something yeah. I'm on the lookout for in any character, especially secondaries. Yeah, he he does have a little bit, Quinn. He does have a little bit with Unwitting Brew. When a allied separatist or Dathomirian primary activates and they're within range three, he does get to do a dash. So I, there I is that more as the primary interacting with him <laughs> rather than him <laughs> interacting with the game outside of his turn. But, fair, fair. Yeah, like <clears throat> just yeah, he, he he does a thing. He does it moderately well, but it is only one thing, and that is not necessarily what you want out of the secondary, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean his stat tree, his, his combat tree, even is pretty. It's pretty good in terms of damage, but no control, like no control. I, in his, I remember in his... when we were having like the lead up to Savage coming out. I, I thought he would have, like, a path in his tree that was just all shoves. Yeah. Like, all the shoves, all the time. And then when we saw him spawn, I was like, all, all of those conditions should just be shoves. And then he's really, <laughs> really good. Like, and also yeah. I think it arguably fits the character better because, you know, he's the big clancy brown brick that throws people around. That's what he's he is brute. in the Clone Wars. Yeah, he's an absolute brute. Um, an unwitting one, you might say. An unwitting brute, yes. Um... So for me, Quinn, if I, well, I think it's your turn. Your turn first. So I'll let you go first, and then I'll give you well, my opinion. He, I think it's B for brick. I'm bringing in the alphabet just for this one. It's B for brick, but he's not that great of a brick. Um, like he very much for me falls into that same category of, I guess you probably take him if you're taking this character in particular for him to go alongside. But equally, I think he does less for that character than Sabre does for her character. <clears throat> yeah, I think I think that is the right place for him. Um, if you're playing Dathomir, take him because he gets he's, he's really good. But out outside of there, I just don't think. Yeah, I just don't think he's he's really uh, he's really that good. Um, and not even a single shove just really, really hurts him. Because then you are relying so on then you are relying on literally murdering your opponent to, to you know. You know to... what could have been really interesting for him? Go on. If instead of Dark Fury he had force repulse. Because oh. think of it, think of what you see him do in the show. There is literally a point where he uses what I imagined force repulse to be. There's a bit where I think Either Dooku and Asajj or Maul and Asajj are like rushing him, and he just goes like that and sends them yeah. both flying. That is force repulse to me. That's what he should probably have, in my opinion. Yeah, I think you could make that a two cost, and it'd have been absolutely fine as well. So, anyway, let's move on, Quinn, to the Mandalorians. Now, there's not too many to go through, but we'll start with Lady Bo Katan Kreez. Your reinforcements have arrived. There we go. Um, 8 2, another four cost, uh, comes in the core box. Proud of the Mandalore, m you know, another Mandalorian um, can can jump. Jetpack, stronger together. 
Um, it's together strong. Mandalore survive is very good. Um, when yeah. she makes a focus, um, she can dash and then double heal or double recover. Bearing in mind, remember that if you move her, do a move action with her, so she gets to do a move action. If she finishes within two, she gets the free focus, which then triggers Mandalore survives, which then means she can dash and then means she can recover too. Like she gets around so much. Um, she gives protection and steadfast to the Mandos as well, which is pretty good. Um, we've said it once and we said it, I think we said it before, where Bo Katan is one of those characters whose stock will only go up as more Mandalorians are released. I think. The moment you can run a full Mandalorian strike team, yeah. some of us serve a higher purpose is insanely good. Oh, crazy. Fact, every single one of your characters. Like... Yeah, crazy, crazy, crazy. Um, Din Djarin could help with this a yeah. little bit. Um, but I think that is still what is holding back, just not even Bo Katan, but the Mandalorians as a general faction in this game at the moment, is there just there's isn't enough of no them. Real leadership, right? Yeah. Like, there's not a single Mandalorian primary. Like, nope. it, it, they just nope. don't exist yet. Like, We're close. AMG, We're really close. Me pre Vizsla, please. <laughs> yeah, we do need some pre Vizsla. I'd love to see the armorer. Like, there's so many really cool uh, Mandalorian characters that we can we can choose from. But, um, but with all that being said, Quinn, when we look at some of the primaries that we've got, who are a little bit more generic, your Ahsokas, your Mauls, um, probably it. Probably yeah. it. Um, you know, you could. Yeah, probably. There's an argument to say that she actually could work well in Dathomir as well, because you can take, you know, the the. I I, I always prefer to take the Mandalorian Super Commandos in Dathomir because there's some bullshit that you can do. But um, all that said, I think she's still a very very solid character. She does a lot. Um, she's got a you know a pretty decent combat tree, um, both at range and indeed up close and personal. Um, three shoves, but they are back end of her combat tree. Um, pretty consistent, I would say, from her. Um, I think she feels middle of the road still, which I think is where we put yeah. her before. Like, um, I think I mean, she really we're, we're is waiting. We have an argument in a little bit, um, but I, I'd argue that she's actually better than middle of the road, just because... Mandalore oh, you think survive. she goes? I, I you think, think she, she goes, goes behind, behind Ahsoka, uh, and you know that, as you said, that stock will only rise. But she I could see her like, going up to S tier very easily if we got more Mandalorians. She, she ticks a lot of the boxes you want from a secondary. She's got a tactic that moves people. <clears throat> She's got an aura that you know helps the rest of your squad. She's decent in combat. Like she, she. Fits the mold of a great primary, of a great secondary. It's just that, like you said, the support isn't there for her right now. Imagine a Mandalorian primary that bought Force Refresh, because that's the problem with with Mandos, right? They are Force heavy, like very, yeah. very Force heavy. Apes together strong, not being innate is rough. <laughs> real tough, yeah. Or imagine. One of the leaderships is Mandalorians are stronger together now becomes an innate ability. Uh, I could totally see that being like pre Vizsla's thing. Like that really like, feels like that could be a leadership for the Mandalorians, yeah. right? Like I do, I do really like that. Um, let's move on to my favorite Mandalorian in the game, Garsax and Merciless Commander. Um, Pride of Mandalore, Jetpack, Mandalorian stronger together. The big differences for him are I've got you in my sights. Uh, so he's got Sharpshooter 2, uh, and then the opponent doesn't benefit from cover. And then after he makes a focus, he gets a hunker. That's really to represent bo wants to get up the board and start you know, slashing at people, punching people. Uh, Gar is a back point holder that just snipes people to death. Uh, he does have a little bit of synergy with his pack hunter thing, but um, he's got so many shoves, it can be really, really good. Um, I absolutely love this guy, Quinn, but... I know where he should go. And he should go in between Wolf and Sabe. Right in the middle really? of B tier. Yes. I thought we were going to have an argument on our hands with me 
like defending Bo against you, like absolutely loving Gar, but oh, has there been some character development while <laughs> stepping away? Like, what's going there, on here? There may have been a little bit of character development, and I have to take some of my own personal opinions out of them. They still, you know, the cream always rises to the top, as they say, but no, I mean, look, Gar Saxon is, you know, is a perfectly serviceable character, you know, he can do some crazy turn one things, right? I have upset many uh, an opponent by destroying their clone troopers round one of them going, I didn't even realise you could attack round one, let alone wound one of my characters. Um, I think he's very solid. There are a few... I don't know if there are any other characters in the game who have more a more consistent damage output at range than Gar. He's very, very consistent. Um, but I think, I think he could be in a position where um, he could get displaced. I, I don't see Bo being displaced as the secondary of choice, unless somebody amazing comes out. But, I could see Gar Saxon being displaced if another decent secondary came out for, I, for the, I could for the see Mandalorians. Him being threatened by the existence of a Paz Vizsla, for example. Yeah. Because, yeah. you know, he is big guy with a gun, which is kind of what Gar is. Um, yeah. I would also like to throw in there a bit of theory as to why a lot of people tend to prefer Gar over Bo. And I think Fire it's away. because of the... I think it's because of the supports they're typically attached to. Because, you know, the the, the Maldalorians, the Super Commandos, they're Gars guys. The Clan yep. Trees, who aren't very good comparatively, are Bo's guys. And I think because of and that, girls. people kind of associate the two. <laughs> Gar, um, guys is gender neutral as far as I'm concerned, I know. but sure. But, but actually, <clears throat> they're, they're better the other way around. Bo is the melee. Yeah. Gar is the ranged. Night Owls, or whatever they're called, they should be Night Owls. They're just Clan uh, Trees, Mandalorians. They're not Night Owls, which is annoying. But they have the Night Owls tag. Um, which is they, are the, they are the ranged, and Super Mandalorian Commandos are the melee. Like, actually, Bo works better with the Mandalorian Super Commandos because she can be up there in the mix, giving them the protection that... Yeah. They need so yeah. I mean, are you okay with the placement of Gar there, Quinn? I've kind of. I'm very surprised by it, but I'm not going to argue against it. <laughs> um, do you want to move into Galactic Empire? Should we take a look at a new character? We, 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 you know what? As a special treat, I think we should. Excellent. This is the little Let's... like mid video treat. Everyone mid video treat. Long. So, Death Trooper Escort Quinn. We've already played. A couple of games uh, with him. Uh, we had a complete mirror match as our first ever game, unsurprisingly. Answers down below as to if you can guess what the lists were. Um, so, Death Trooper Escort, he is going to be a four cost? Four cost, yeah. yeah. Going to be a four cost, 9 2, which is pretty good. Um, he's got a tactic which is Imperial Efficiency. At the start of this unit's activation, Choose this unit or an allied galactic empire supporting unit. Each character in the chosen unit may dash. If the chosen character... Sorry, if any... If the chosen unit has any damage, each character in that unit may instead reposition. That, Quinn, especially when you think about what the kind of theme of the galactic empire is, you know, taking the damage to get the advantage... That's one of the best tactics abilities in the game, as far as I'm concerned. Like being able yeah. to double reposition on a support unit, or as in make you know each character being able to make a a reposition um, is really really good. Um, I like even it. just repositioning yourself to get out of dodge if like a fight is turning against you as well. Like, yep, it's real yeah. solid. It's really good, really good. Uh, tactical advance. Um, it costs one active ability. Again, it's going to give him this force action economy. He gets to dash and he gets that focus action for free. That focus action is important because of the rigorous training, giving him sharpshooter one. And then disciplined is a reactive 
cost one. After an attack, targeting a character in this unit is resolved. If this unit is not wounded, this unit may use this ability. Each character may reposition towards an active objective, not the one that you're closest to, to anyone. And then if you're not engaged, gain a hunger token. Um, I like Quinn. I want to just say, because credit where credit's due, they are getting better at making the cards clearer. If you are not engaged, you gain a hunker. We haven't seen that before. And what a lot of people don't realise, Quinn, do they, is that if you are... You can be engaged with a wounded character. Like yes. you, you, So even if you're within range two of a wounded character, you still wouldn't get your hunker token on this. But um, I really like him, Quinn. And I'll tell you the other thing I really like about him. He has the Stormtrooper tag. Yeah, which is very good with... Is it coordinated offensive? That, that's the ability? Uh, coordinated offensive? offensive from the Stormtrooper charge. And yeah. Sha Sergeant, Sergeant, Sergeant. Stormtrooper Sergeant. Um, I really like this guy, Quinn. I think he is I going mean, to be a staple. Very much so. I also think it's worth going through his combat tree quickly because it, it's real solid. It's it's pretty darn good, isn't it? Um, I like. Do you know what? Isn't this a little bit more what? Um, uh, Savage Oppressor's card should have looked like it's like oh, you go to the yeah. top, you go to the top way. It's all very much attrition based, right? You get the strain, you get the damage. I'm gonna expose you for somebody else to attack you. Whereas the bottom one is like more control. I'm gonna shove you. I'm gonna disarm you. I'm gonna pin you. I can shove you again. Like I really like that you get the options there, and he can trigger a dash off an attack from his expertise, which yeah. I really like. Really, really like. Um yeah, what 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 else have you got to say, Quinn, other than the the numbers that are on there? Like seven seven. Mm -hmm. Seven seven, which is realistically nine seven. Yep. Because well, nine eight, because you're always getting focused with this dude. Like you, unless you are in a real force deficit, like you are gonna be using his mm -hmm. run and gun equivalent, because let's be honest, that's what it is. It's um, running gun, yeah. I'd also like to bring up the survivability of the Death Trooper escort because he's got he's got the equivalent of clone armor, which, as we know, is universally terrible. Like it is, yeah. One on one to two, two on three, nothing above that isn't great. But he's got five dice to do it with. He's potentially got that hunker off the back of the disciplined, but also he has built-in protection and nine health. That yeah. is that built-in protection is huge. I heard somebody say, so "Oh, good. it basically makes him like a ten health character." No, 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 no. It could make him like an eleven or even a twelve health character because if you don't one shot him, it then doubles in value. It, it it increases by one the value of that protection every time you make an attack and don't take him down. Right? It's scales hugely in the game. As you as you go through, um, he's also the only character in uh, Galactic Empire, at least from the new ones that we've got, that has an ability that is generating him a hunker token. Um, yeah, he's the only one with any kind of hunker synergy. As, yeah, because well, we sy sy synergy's a stretch, but yeah, yeah, but we because I joked, didn't I, did, when we played the other day with it, and I was like, we're like, however many activations in. And look at the difference between Galactic Empire and Galactic Republic. Not a single hunker token had been taken on the board. Yeah. <laughs> um, which is pretty crazy to think, really. But, yeah. Um, I just... I, I really like him, Quinn. I really, really like him. Um, that, that tactic ability is very, very good. And as you say, good damage output, good survivability. Um out of action things that he can do, or sorry, out of activation things he can do is is always really, really nice on a character. Where would you put him? Uh, it, it, it's a tough one, right? Because he's really, really good. Um, and the reason it's tough is because whilst he is good, we don't have too much in the way of Empire like units at the minute. Like, yeah. what, we're up to... Kind of three-ish squads with Empire. 
If you count Inquisitors, yeah, one well, person does. I, I wouldn't, but, <clears throat> I mean, you know. It's a bit like trying to rank the core box, really, isn't it? Like, Yeah, like, it, we're seeing the start of the Empire, <clears throat> and I very much like what I'm seeing with them. Yeah. And in terms of, like, you know, staring into the tea leaves and predicting, like, how well he's going to fit into them in the future and how much play he'll see, I reckon he'll see a decent amount. Like, oh, I same agree. Same with... The, the Stormtrooper Sergeant, who we'll get on to, I think they are probably going to end up being those staple kind of secondary characters, <clears throat> right? Yeah. And because of that, like, I, I'm I'm saying, like, either high B, low A, like, I mean, just for, for... as a precautionary thing, because we don't know what it's going to shape out, like, shake out to be, like... Yeah, for me, from the games I've played with him, Quinn, and the games I've seen, I think he performs very, very well. Um, I, I would put him down at the bottom end of A, Kind of with the same caveat as Bo Katan, really, which is yeah. don't expect, don't be surprised if they don't move up, is is kind of what I'm saying. Um, he he's not he's not quite as good as Rex, for example, at the same threat level. If you yeah. just look at like that support piece, but I would say he does a lot more on the aggression and the control side as well. But um. But yeah, I, I I really like him. I think he's I think he's really good. Uh okay, Quim. Do we have to? <sighs> Do I really have to waste however many minutes of my life discussing this character and their existence? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> All oh, right. On people at home couldn't see that. <laughs> Hang on a second. Let me uh oh. let me do this for comedic effect. Let's take 30 seconds to explain why she isn't good. <clears throat> I don't want to talk to her about her. You do it. First of all, call the hunt should be a tactic. Number yeah. one. Um, number two, I, I mean, fear betrays you is okay. Awful. No, it's <laughs> awful. You, you're, um, you're trading conditions on a character for dice on a combat tree that does not warrant that quantity of dice. Yeah. Um, right. A combat tree... I mean, shove on one is fine, but, like, just... Just... She's like... A, as a three threat, I'd be like... Three costs, I'd be like, yeah, she's perfectly fine. Yeah. Perfectly fine, but way, way over-costed and in both her actual cost and the cost of Call the Hunt being won. And yeah. Even if if that even if Quinn that was a zero cost active ability that then cost one, yeah, when she became wounded, right? Something to help her along. Um, also, why, why can't she throw a lightsaber? As a thing, like know. all the Inquisitors do, like it's kind of their mo is they throw their lightsabers about and like spin about like Beyblades. Like, why have we not got helicopter guys yet in this game? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, she's 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 just <clears throat> she's once, just once again, like Cody. She's in need of a genuine errata to be, yeah. in my opinion, and I'd argue yours, viable, right? Yeah, like it feels like they didn't want to make either the one of the supports a five, so she could be a three, or mm -hmm. Grand Inquisitor a seven. Because she should be a three threat with what her card is, um, yeah. but yeah, there we go. Reva is probably the worst of the worst in the in the game right now. I would say I'd say she's the well, single honestly, worst. If if I had the option of taking Reva or Fifth Brother in my secondary slot, I take Fifth Brother, and Fifth Brother oh, is a support. Like he he's a one model support, which should make him far worse than a secondary. Give her grease thing. Let her break ties. Like why? Like there are so many so, things. You so could many do things they could have done. Reaver, like just, yeah. Uh... <clears throat> anyway, anyway, let's get on to a new, more exciting character, Quim. Uh, it's our three threat option for the Galactic Empire. Stormtrooper Sergeant. He's a nine-two. Inex inexorable advance. Hey, I did well there. Is his tactic at the start of this unit's activation? You may choose an allied Galactic Empire supporting unit. Each character in the chosen unit may advance, but for that extra movement, 
they take a damage. And this is what we were talking about, weren't we, with that? There's a big trade-off in the Empire where they're almost straining themselves to push that extra mile for the for the Emperor. Um, and, it, and, and it's done in the form of damage. Imperial Firepower, uh, I've not found myself using this very much. I um, don't either, but Phil uses it a lot, which I find quite entertaining. <clears throat> I think if you were coming up against a character who really suffered from the pin, for example, because I think yeah. pins are far more um, impactful, impactful right? than, than thing. Like Mother Talzin, for example, right? Yeah. For a force, if you could just turn off Mother Talzin's leadership before you murder someone, it's pretty good. But it is niche. Um Coordinated offense is where it's at for me, Quinn. When a character in this unit or another allied stormtrooper character makes an attack as part of a combat action before dice are rolled, this unit may use this ability. Add one die to the attack roll for each allied stormtrooper unit, very important, other than the attacking unit that is within range five and line of sight to the target. So you need line of sight, so it's different to coordinated assault. But the way that works, let's say the Stormtrooper Sergeant is the one making the attack. If there is one of the two Stormtrooper support units within range five and line of sight, he'll get one extra dice on top of everything else that he would get. If there are two of the two Stormtrooper characters within range five that are the Stormtrooper support units, he's still only going to get one extra dice because they're part of the same unit. But, and why we said the really important that the Death Trooper has that Stormtrooper tag, if he was in there, it would then be two extra dice because it's a different unit. So it's a really nice synergy um, with that. But, <clears throat> I mean... Again, only ever going to get better over time, right? Oh, as, the, as, the, as there are more Stormtrooper units on the board... You know, because you'd imagine scout troopers are going to have stormtrooper, right? There's, I mean, we're going to get a death trooper support unit at some point, right? Oh, Krennic is with like Krennic, right? Krennic off even Thrawn, because Thrawn had a Thrawn had death troopers. Yeah, but like Krennic is like how death troopers were introduced to it's canon, true. and like they're just so synonymous with each other for me, at least. I love some Sith troopers as well, but anyway, we're digressing. Uh, and then you know, only stormtroopers are separate. So uh, uh -oh, I need you to do your best Alec Guinness impression for that one. Only Stormtroopers are so bruh. That's terrible. Um, so yeah, Sharp Shooter 1, so it's fine. Um, his combat tree is... Eh. Yeah. I do like the heal off one, the recover off one, because of that damage that you're doing to people around you with yeah. moving them around and things, so that can be really nice. Um, you know, pin... A, a pin and a crit on one expertise yeah. is not to be sniffed at as well, by the way. Um, I mean, but yeah. Three being three successes in the pin as well is pretty <clears throat> yeah. damn good. Like, Yeah. He's just, you know, he's maxing out at five, uh, six damage at melee, but let's be honest, if you're punching I mean, somebody with this guy, you've probably done something wrong. <laughs> He's very much a support secondary, right? That is oh, like his, 100, his role 100%. is to enable the rest of your strike team. Yeah. And and I think we have yeah, to compare I, him to Pons. I feel like that is the comparative with this, is that he yeah. is the three threat support for Galactic Empire and Pons kind of fills that role for Galactic Republic. Republic and I, and I think when you compare so them, much better than Pons. So much he better. is like... way better, way way better. Um, so yeah, I, I, I think he's t pushing up towards the top end of B, bottom end of A, maybe even a little bit higher up than the Death Trooper because he is only a three cost. Yeah, it it. it... It's an interesting one because, like Bo Katan and like the Death Trooper, stock is only going to go up. You're just going to get more and more stormtroopers in the game. You're going to get more and more dice off the back of a coordinated offensive, and eventually, he's going to be a bit silly. <laughs> like, I mean, you would imagine that the most your 
ever going to be able to add from it is three. I can Another... see four. Really? Because I think there is potential the Inferno Squad and more importantly Iron Versio oh, are going to have the Stormtrooper has tag, the and that Stormtrooper tag gives you a Stormtrooper primary. Yeah, I mean, in that case, I mean, well, that could be five. If we're well, no, saying the Stormtrooper we get primaries a are on, Stormtrooper primary, right? Yeah. Cause... I don't think they're going to have the Stormtrooper tag. Interesting. I, I just... I know but they're it, Imperial Special Forces, but like, if Death Troopers are Stormtroopers, like, yeah, which are like also like, can be. I mean, let's be honest, they're also Imperial Special Forces, right? Like, yeah. They are. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's it's. I mean, I think, I think it goes almost either side of the Death Trooper is where I'm thinking, but again, I don't know which side. Uh, right, I I think there's an. Not an easy way to figure out what side he goes on, but I think there's a logical way to do this, which is how often do we think you're going to need a three in an Imperial list? A lot. How many Imperial primaries are going to be front-loaded to the point of being like a seven cost? Because um, I'm thinking like two more, like probably Thrawn. I think and, you're going to get, well, I think, I think you're going to get um, at least one six. Yeah, an Emperor is probably a six. Depending um, on how they do it. I could see him as a seven if they're going more pulling the strings Emperor rather than... Yeah, you know, may maybe. Nah. Um, <laughs> nah. um, <laughs> Thrawn, for me, would be a seven. Yeah. But, and, and not... That. Krennic is an eight, maybe even a nine. Um, I mean, Veers could be in there, but again... Is going to be an eight or a nine. Let me let me Uno reverse that question on you, Quinn. Okay. When do you when are you ever going to let's say that those characters are out? When are you ever going to not want to play either a Vader or an Emperor or a Thrawn? Like, are you really going to take Krennic and Veers as your two leaders in Galactic Empire? I, mean, I could see playing like a Krennic Gideon. <laughs> like, I think that could be cool. Like, yeah. I, I think we also have to remember it's not just about the primaries, though, is it? What we, we you know we know that there are five threat supports, five cost supports in this game now. My, my argument at, against that is what in Empire fits that. You got Sith troopers. We have got the Dark Troopers. We know they're not a five, and they were probably like candidate number one mm. to be a five in Empire, right? That's fair. Right. That is fair. Yeah, I'm trying to think of... Unless they give the Scout Troopers a bike, yeah, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. He goes behind the Death Trooper. I, I think he goes behind the Death Trooper, just because on his own, he doesn't do as much. And obviously, he's a three. That makes sense. Yeah. Uh, Aura Sing, Quinn. Play it um, once. What, what, what do you want me to sing right now? What? Played her once. Um, she costs. She's a five cost. Let me just repeat that. She is a five cost. Kalani is a five cost. Yeah. Um, double the contract, double the payout. Uh, she's a five cost, by the way. That is eight two. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um it, I, I, my problem with this Quinn is, it's like. AMG put so much value on being able to let her make a second attack. And she doesn't really have much else, right? Payday, great. I mean, when you look at the combat tree in comparison to the whole, oh, she gets two attacks thing. One, you're paying for those two attacks, which is not something IG does uh, and is a support. Um, but also, the expertise on those attacks is pretty damn bad, like, compared to what it should be for someone who is costing five. Yeah, I mean, compared to Kalani, like, on one result, she just gets a damage. Like, she's she's worse than Cody at shooting. 
and she's you, supposed to be weird. like, like, yeah. Um, we we have we have another candidate, Quinn, for the bottom of the bottom. You know what? I have seen Reva played more times than I've seen Aura Singh played, and I think that speaks for itself. I think she. Do you know what, Reva? I said you were the worst individual character in the game. I'm going to take that back. I believe uh, you may you be. You can offer a formal apology. <laughs> you may be the second worst character in this game. Um, yeah, just for the cost. Like, even all of the synergy with the fact that she, you know, she's scoundrel and she's bounty hunter. It's like, there's just, yeah, just not, just not worth the cost at all right now. Let's talk about a boy, though, who is absolutely worth every goddamn point that he costs. Do you know what, You are so in love with him, man. I would pay a point more for this guy. Grief Karga, he's three cost. And boy, does this guy do so, so much. 8-2. Some of my favourite people are bounty hunters. Each allied bounty, each allied bounty hunter within four may heal and then dash. Yes, it costs a force, but he's a three cost. What else do you expect? Close the deal for one. <laughs> this is just daft. When an opposing player chooses to activate a unit from reserve... This unit may use this ability. Choose an allied bounty hunter character. The chosen character may immediately dash, then make a five dice attack, targeting a character in the unit that was chosen to activate. Um, you can... I, uh, Django. Yeah, oh, Django. All of a Cad sudden... Bane. Like, I mean, Cad Bane with five dice is brutal. Like, yeah. his damage output is huge. So you combine them together... You're not only having the a a reasonable chance, depending on the situation of you know, because J- Django is the only other character in the game, Queen, that we've had this sort of reactive. I'm going to murder you thing, right? And generally, if unless you're flush with power and you know that you've got nothing else to spend it on, unless you need one, maybe two damage you're often not going to use not so fast, right, on Django. Yeah. I'm using this every goddamn time that I get to do it. Every time they bring something from reserve, I'm using this. Um, It's it's so good. Even just the dash alone would would be really good, but the fact that you get to make a five-dice attack is just crazy. Um, There is one job. This is innate. Um, it is basically a bounty that you put on a random character or a random unit, and then the first time any bounty hunter wounds that unit, um, you get to basically score a VP, so you get one struggle. Uh, what You get to move the struggle token at one, which is, is really, really nice. Um, and then wolves at my back, when determining control of an active objective that a character in this unit is contesting, if there is a tie... This unit's controlling player takes control of the objective. Maybe, Quinn, one of the most single, powerful innate abilities in the game. Like, I just stop ties. Um, We've seen it on a couple of others. You know, uh, Moff Gideon's got it. Fifth brother, fourth sister, or whatever she's called, has got it. Um, What are your thoughts on Grief King? Because I'm I'm intrigued to, to see if you are as enthusiastic about him as I am. I'm already going to burst your bubble and say I'm not. <clears throat> right. But first of all, Boo. bounty hunters aren't really my thing in Star Wars. There are some bounty hunters I love. Like, I like Django. I absolutely adore Embo. I really want Embo in this game with his little dog. Um, my, my counterpoints to Grief are he should be a three because he feels like a three. Um, in terms of his actual personal output, He's not got great damage output. Like No, no, he, not he at all. Doesn't. No, not at all. Not at all. He has some interesting expertise options with the whole disarm oh. range and the exposed melee. Like those are very interesting. Um I really like the one job kind of like theme of getting a VP when you kill something. That very much feels like a bounty hunting 
like a bounty hunter thing. Yeah. Well, because in the past the fa- it's been force, hasn't it, that they've used to represent that. Yeah, which doesn't feel right, you know? Like, that doesn't feel like the reward for a job well done. Yeah. Close the deal only work has its pros and cons, because yes, you could potentially screw someone over in their turn. However, it also means that grief has less to do on his activation. Yeah. And therefore just, once again, limits how good any given grief activation is going to be. Like, I don't know, I he's got some that... of my favourite people are bounty hunters. He's pretty darn good. Y- yeah, like, that is good. Equally, it does cost a force, and he's not exactly the most difficult character in the game to wound. Um, <laughs> that is true. I-, I would argue that comparative to the other threes in the game, he does less on his turn than either of the other two. And I'd also argue he is less of a support than the Stormtrooper Sergeant is. I think he provides less to a team. But... I know, but rule of cool, right? (laughs) Rule of cool. I mean, you like him because you're old and you've seen Rocky. Like, you know. Hey, I'm Predator. Um... I didn't even know he was in that. Like, yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, Yeah, I mean, I, I, I really, really like this guy, Quinn. But as you say, there's been some character development, Quinn, whilst you've been gone. So whilst I really really like him, um, and it's also because I'm a I'm scum and villainy at heart, Quinn. Right? That's you're that's one of them. Yeah. That's really what you know where where it comes down to. Um, whilst I love him, right? As soon as he's out, as soon as I can play him, as soon as I get myself some Bosk and um, you know some of the other bounty hunters on there as well, I'm going to be playing them all the time. Um, I'm still able to articulate the fact that. I think he should be towards the top end of B tier. I, I agree that he should be towards the top end of B, but I think it it's very much dependent on where how things shake out in terms of how good he actually turns out to be on the table, right? Because at the moment, yeah. we've not had any table time with him. Um, there are ways you can play him, but they're not exactly optimal. Um, and I think... Because of that, like he, he's either side of Wolf for me, and I think at the minute I'd put him behind Wolf, just because he, he I'm, just I'm, doesn't do enough on his turn. Like I'm, I, I, I like proactive characters, <clears throat> and I think that does heavily bias me towards Wolf. Yeah, character. you're a very active ability character, aren't you? Whereas I like to be, you know, and just look at the list that we play, right? Like I like all of the you've done this to me, so now I'm going to do this to you. Whereas you're very much a, I want to make sure that I can do this. Yes, yeah, so I, I don't care what you're doing to me. I'm going to make you have a problem. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm fine with that. Again, Mando's, Din Djarin's card is going to heavily impact where yes. he sits and also how quickly we then get other bounty hunters um, in there as well. Um and some other bounty hunter leaders as well could be a could be yeah, a big I, thing. But I, I still really want Jabba in this game. <clears throat> I want oh, Jabba to be absolutely. I, I want him to have a thing where instead of a support, he can take another secondary. Yeah, like I want him to be there with Boba and Bosk. I, I also have a theory for you, Rich. Go on, we love your theories. With regard to your character development, I think because I haven't been here. And you haven't had to defend your opinions nearly every video <laughs> and be proven wrong at every turn, of course. That <laughs> you're actually more accepting of the fact that sometimes there is bias. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Um, right, let's talk about some meth care bears, Quinn. Starting out uh, with it, plop. It, it, plip plop. Um, plip plop. Everyone loves Plip Plop. He he's he's so curious. Oh, don't we don't we love is, teddy bears? He is a curious creature. Um obviously new to the game, brand new out, not many people will have got many games with him. I'm I'm gonna say this is a general overarching thing, Quinn. I don't think the Ewoks are very good. I think even if they were very good, I wouldn't care. <laughs> <laughs> it's the wrong film for you, isn't it? I mean, I I would much prefer if they'd gone with the original plan of them being Wookiees. Have you not seen The Caravan of Courage? 
<laughs> I think I genuinely ha I think I rented that from Blockbuster when I was wow. like six. Showing your age. Um, I mean, but let's have a look at what he does. Like, I've and, and I have to preface that with I've only played three or four games with or against them. So I think I played about eight, like with or against. So yeah. like, I, I've seen a fair bit of them. This Which, guy hasn't really impressed me. <clears throat> yeah, and and just like overall, like they've got some. Like you look at individuals and like you go, oh god, they've got some really good stuff, but they are very squishy, like. And very, very little durability on there. But anyway, Fend Retreat costs one, choose another ID, what character within three, and then enemy character that the chosen character is engaged with. The chosen ally character may um, reposition away from the enemy character and gain a hunker. Unless making they can't be engaged, even though it doesn't say it, they can't be engaged. Um, I mean, it does say in the main rule book that you can't. So I, I, know, guess I know. They shouldn't need to say it, but it's still they good shouldn't. practice. They shouldn't. Uh, then the chosen enemy character gains expose and may dash toward the chosen character. Um, that's fine. Like it's it's it's. I like that it's a little bit something different. It isn't just move and attack or move and this. Like so, I like that. Stealthy approach. You're going to see it on every single one of them. Uh, it's defensive maneuver, uh, but with the added well, no, extra it, of better than defensive maneuver of yeah. being able to either gain a hunker or. Make a focus action, which I wish this is what clones had. <clears throat> of course, you do. If you replaced every instance of defensive maneuver and running gun with this on clones, <laughs> you know, like arguably the most elite fighting force we've ever seen in Star Wars. Like, uh, you're still like talking about the Ewoks, right? <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, every, everyone loves Ewoks. Like, I don't, I don't detest them with every fiber of my being. Um, but like, God, I hate how dirty they've done clones, but. We're talking about Ewoks, anyway. Yeah. Fearless and inventive. Cost one. When a character in this unit makes a melee attack as part of a combat action before dice are rolled, this unit may use this ability. Add two dice to the attack pool for each enemy character other than the target that is not wounded and is engaged with one or more characters in this unit. It's a lot they of caveats. Make it so wordy. <laughs> Yeah. Why that caveats. couldn't have just been... <clears throat> I mean, yeah, range two is not right, is it? Because you've got you've got uh, height levels and things. But um, again, could be really... I mean, one force for two dice isn't... You know, especially when you've probably already used your stealthy approach to get your focus. But if you don't need that focus, because you don't need the dash, sorry... Then this is kind of a nice kind of follow up if you can do it. Like if you've got two people engaged, then that's really good. And it is character, um, but yeah, it <clears throat> it it's there. It is what it is. It, it is a thing on his card. <laughs> it is. What does this do when a character in this unit makes a melee attack targeting an enemy character that has expose or pin? The attacking character may use. <clears throat> The attacking character may use the target character's melee expertise chart during the attack instead of its own. <clears throat> Which is brutal, by the way, Quinn. Yeah. Like, just going, um, oh, hi, Vader. <laughs> um, <laughs> like, How you doing, Dooku? <laughs> like... They basically turned him into Taskmaster. Uh, Paplu is sharp. Who knew, <laughs> knew Pliplop was Star Wars' <laughs> version of Taskmaster? Like, yeah. We'll have a quick look at his card because I don't think we've gone through him. He before. has some interesting expertise, right? He does. Yes, he is reverse expertise. Now, yeah, the reason, he's a bit backwards. <laughs> yeah, but the reason for that, Quinn, is you want him to be using the person he's attacking, right? Generally. Yeah, it, it also leads to this weird situation where there's kind of an incentive to not roll as many dice as you can in a lot of situations. Because the more dice you roll, the more likely you are to roll expertise. The more expertise you roll, <clears throat> the uh, arguably the worse plip plop gets, right? <laughs> so definitely with defense, I think because you yeah. can take your opponent's and you can very... He has the built-in tech 
to be able to just go back here to that feigned retreat because he's got the built-in uh, tech to give the expose. I think it makes him better because it's a little bit like um, it's not quite the same as as Darth Maul where he gives them the expose as well, but it's the fact that the thing he needs to make what does this do work, he can do himself. I think if that wasn't the case and there was no coordinated fire expose from trappers or something, then you'd be going, Jesus, this is real bad. But I think because he can he can do it himself, I, I think it's kind of okay. Um, yeah. But... Um, I mean, like, like, I, let's face it, I'm never going to be overly impressed <clears throat> with an Ewok. I just, I thought I was going to really enjoy the Ewoks, Quinn, because of the whole descriptive thing that they gave them. Like, they're fast out the gate. They're really attrition-based. But the thing you realise in this game is... Attrition rarely wins game. Rarely wins games, like, and they fall off very quickly because they're yeah, very well, because force heavy. If any attrition is applied back to them, which the majority of lists in this game are going to be able to do, they're going to be able to push back and wound your Ewoks quite comfortably. Yeah, they, they really start to struggle. Like, <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. Which is why I think I'm sure in the future, Quinn, there'll be some very competitive Ewok lists. And I think it comes in the form of Leia doing that mm. cross path thing where Ewoks become uh, rebels, rebels become Ewoks. I think that's where you could see a little mingling of of, of Ewoks being being in there. But I think I, I would a... also argue that like the, the strength of the Ewoks isn't in their secondaries, right? No, no, not at all, not at all. Um, yeah, and again, I mean, and when I say I don't think they're very good, by the way, I want to preface that with. They're just not my play style, I don't think, in this game. And my play style for this game has <clears throat> changed quite a lot because I'm, you know me, playing MCP Queen. I want to table you every time, right? That's how I play it. You can't do that in this game. So therefore, if I can't table you, then actually I'm going to play more, you know, zonal control, which is kind of what this game is. Um, but with all that said and done, where does Plip Plop go? I'd argue Plip Plop is worse than Savage. Like, just... I, in the list he's in, sure, you're going to take him because you're forced to. But equally, he doesn't... I think perfectly fine for where he is. You ain't ever seeing him right now. That's right now. You ain't ever seeing him outside of Ewoks. I think that's... No, never. Like, <clears throat> I think that's a fair statement to make. So I think because of that, that is, you know, that's that's where he goes. I think that's, you know, perfectly fine. Let's talk about Warwick Davis. <clears throat> the intrepid warrior. He's, gr he's grown a bit of a beard, hasn't he? He has, yeah. Um, obviously, Wicket, lead the charge. At the start of this unit's activation, choose an enemy character in line of sight and an allied Ewok supporting unit within three... Each character in this unit and each character in the chosen allied unit may dash towards the chosen character. Again, it's all about getting them up the board towards trying to murder someone, which is the little meth murdering Care Bears are. Hunting Horn. <clears throat> I do like this, but um, it's it can be stupid, especially depending on what that new map layout um, yeah. <laughs> that Han Solo based is going to be. Um, it's an action. Not often we see active abilities, Quinn, that are actions. Um, there's only a couple of others in the game, isn't there? Um, and they says that, and I'm trying to think of what they are. Oh, uh, an action. Um... We'll come back to you on it. Each enemy unit within range three that is not engaged gains pin. Each enemy unit that is engaged gets exposed. Um, I mean, that's pretty good, Quinn, let's be honest. It, 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 it's more than pretty good. I would say it's a <laughs> bit good, which you know, is like the highest echelon of good you can get. Now, it is unit, so there is no double stacking, so that you know you get a, 
um, you get a damage you or get anything like a that. Free damage on there. Um, yeah. And then you know standard stealthy approach that he gets there. Quick look at his tree. We have done a breakdown of him before, but quick look at his tree. Oh, there we go. Um, shove on one, a sensible expertise tree queen. Another character that's a secondary with dice manipulation uh, is nice. Um, he's got a lot of movement. He's got a lot of damage that he can put out really as well. So two, four, six, seven, eight at range is not half bad especially when your opponent's going to have an exposed potentially, and therefore it's really easy to get that damage through. Um, You've also got to factor in, like, you know, the extra attacks you're getting off of something like Log Ray, right? Yep, absolutely, absolutely. Or, um, or is Log Ray only um, support? One of them's defense, one of them's attack. I can't remember which way around it is, yeah. Um, for me, Quinn, I, I think the only thing that we can really compare Wicket to is Paplu, right? And maybe one other character on this list that you can put in yeah. there. Maybe the two. Of, for me, he is the better of oh, he, he's the, much the, better the, than the, the, the Ewoks. Like, really, really good in terms of if you're running Ewoks, he's he's kind of the guy that's going to set everything up. He's going to pounce himself in, do his little aura, and kind of set everybody else up to then be able to take everybody down quickly. I, so I think he's a key integral part of, if you do choose to play Ewoks, he's going to be the guy that's going to make it work for you. So because of that, I think he has to go up higher. Um, for me, Quinn, I'd probably put him... And I think it's a little bit different when we're ranking him versus somebody like Sabe or somebody like... Uh, uh, grief where they don't really have a fully fleshed out strike team yet whereas Ewoks do so yeah. if, I think that kind of bumps him up a little bit and I think I'm probably going to put him in A tier and probably behind the Stormtrooper Sergeant I think because I think I'll, I'll, I'll... I'll grant him a seat in A tier, but not the rank of anything better than the worst thing in A tier. <laughs> no, but I think if you are playing Ewoks, he is like a bit of a linchpin. Like outside yeah. the primaries, he is a bit of a linchpin in terms of what he does and getting that big, you know, bubble expose off, if you like, which can be, I mean, even just the pin can be really good. But yeah, I think. Quick question, actually, Quinn. Let's go back here. Mm. Each enemy unit within three... That is, okay, so I was just thinking then, what about if one of the characters was engaged and the other one wasn't, but by one of them being engaged means they are engaged, the, the doesn't it? The unit is engaged. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's how, that will, how that will read. Um... Okay, let's go on to Leia Organa, a.k.a. Boosh. We've gone through her card before, Quinn. She's Rebel Alliance. She's a bounty hunter. So there is some, you know, a little bit of synergy there with the bounty hunters. Um, she's fearless and inventive, apparently. That's a thing. Um, I've heard people say they don't like Boosh. And I think she's fine. Like... <laughs> I think the issue with Boosh, or Booth, as I like to call her, um, if anyone understands that reference, well done. Um, the, the issue with Boosh is that she's kind of the opposite of Bo-Katan. I think her stock is only going to go down. Because I think that there are only going to be more and more rebel-like secondaries coming out. And I think it's going to be very difficult for them to all be worse than Boosh. It's fair. It's fair. I, I, For me, I think she's fine. Like, I, I, I don't like... I don't like that she... I don't like that she has all of her things that are, you know, fearless and inventive, right? When you're doing melee and things like that. <clears throat> but then you look at her... 
melee expertise versus her ranged expertise. Like, well, you want to be shooting with her, not in melee with her. But then her card is like, no, you want to be in melee with her because she gets to do extra. And it's like, there's a little bit of a disconnect between her yeah, abilities. She's confused as to where <clears throat> she wants to be, and, right? Yeah. I think if you were to have swapped round the expertise tree on Shock Lance and Heavy Blaster Pistol, I think there'd have been a lot more value because then there's synergy throughout, whereas it's kind of like not very good yeah, because I mean, of that. Also, I think low blow is just one force too expensive for it to ever really see use. Um, I, especially when you're considering, you know, she comes in the box with Luke. L Luke is currently the only rebel primary she can go with, because she can't go with Leia. Um, yeah. Like, that's a three-force primary, who, yes, refreshes the force every time he goes, but it does mess with the economy of how much force you could spend when and where. Yeah, and because of that, low blow feels very expensive, and also just generally, uh, she's not super survivable. Like, no, she's not. Is that okay, expertise is not great. That expertise, is it? I, I find in a lot of situations, I, when there's crit negation, I always feel like there's one too few blocks on the expertise for it to be worthwhile. Yeah. And I know it's like, oh, turn a crit into a fail. That's better than a block, arguably. But there are a lot of situations where they're just dark crits to block. Like... Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. It's very, very situational, right? And if, if there is no crits, then three is no better than two in this case, or no yeah. better than one even. So, <clears throat> yeah, I... For me, Quinn, I... Again... I think she's fine. I think we almost have to... I think we almost have to say with this one that right now you would say she's probably a B tier, but I'm going to probably say that I would probably rather take one of the Ewok, sec Ewok secondaries with Luke rather than her. So even though they're not going to have the Rebel... Unless you take... Let's just say the other layer, right? They're not going to have the Rebel Alliance tag. Luke doesn't give a shit about that. Yeah, it's true. Uh, like, <clears throat> she's, she's not doing anything for Luke. No. I so, mean, arguably, she does a tiny little bit for R two D two and Lando with fan out. But one, I, I'd argue they're not great supports. But also, oh, I. That's for a different video. I heavily disagree with you <laughs> on that one. Heavily, heavily disagree. But um... for, for me, with, with the <clears throat> caveat that, in, in my opinion, she's only going to go down. Yep. I'm going to preempt that downward landslide she's going to go on. And I would argue putting her beneath Barry, where you've got her now. Yep. I, I, I completely agree. Completely agree. Um, okay, Quinn, rounding out the list. We've got everyone's favourite droids. Um, 3PO. Oh, I like one of them. <laughs> 3PO and R2-D2. Um, he's not even the best astromech. Um, <laughs> no, he's not. <laughs> um, these guys are a three. No, they're a four, sorry. I do apologise, they're a four. <laughs> I wish um, they were a three. Brilliant Good operation. Lord, I wish they were a three. <laughs> Cost one. She's, I don't get why Leia is the other primary they've got where 3PO was God, God yeah, King 3PO. God. <laughs> Equally, I would hate to acknowledge the fact that in this game, C3PO can be a primary character. Like, <laughs> it's. You know what? I, I'm going to offer a little challenge uh, to the comments uh, and also drive a little bit of engagement on the video. Um, of these two droids, which ones do you think I hate more? It's a real tricky question, I know, <clears throat> but just uh, answers in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> um, they do, however, Quinn, have something unique. What is unique about 3PO and R2-D2? Uh, they are the only secondary with a double-sided stance guard. They are. So... 
to represent the fact that there are two characters because we've never had that before. <clears throat> um, we've got Against My Programming, um, which is the more defensive of the two, the more healy of the two, the fact it does literally no damage until you get to five successes. Um, but, you know, it's there for, you know, it's there for, for more heal and more defensive. And then you have, uh, I always forget the name of this one, Angry Trilling, um, which actually, actually, Quinn, double shove on two isn't to be sniffed at. It's just I mean, his expertise just is terrible. into them, right? <laughs> his expertise is terrible. Like, I'd have I mean, liked to have seen one crit on one. Yeah, I mean, th th this is R2-D2 we're talking about. He's like... He, he's no goddamn war hero. Rich. He is a war hero. He is <laughs> an absolute seen him war hero. B two battle droids. Right? <laughs> exactly. You got scared on here, like, like exactly. Um, so yeah, I mean, I again, I think you're seeing people play them now a little bit. I, I just. I just don't think... I mean, the only thing that they've got going for them is that all of the Ewoks act as bodyguards for them for ranged attacks. Whoa. But that's... I do like Brilliant Operation. I think that's pretty good. Or oration, not Operation. Even Sorry, br Brilliant Oration even. Um, so again, I would argue, Quinn, that for a Rebel Alliance... Se support unit sorry a rebel alliance secondary right now for me these guys are probably better than Bush but I would probably still rather take two Ewoks <laughs> well, I'm just going to come out and say it. I think this is a joke character That that's how bad they are I think they're a joke character <laughs> like I mean for, for people that played Guild Ball, which th there will be some of you watching this, the, these guys are on par with veteran Captain Salt in terms of how much of a joke they are. For, for reference, Rich, Salt was the mascot of the Fisherman team and was literally an otter. Not like a special <laughs> magical otter, just an otter. And for April Fools, they made a special, like, ridiculous card for them as the captain of the team, dressed as a pirate. Okay. <laughs> you, you can use them in an actual game. Like, these guys are a joke. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, I think they go just above Boosh. But I think... Or do you think they go below? Are you saying think, down here? I think they're slightly better than Aura Sing. I, I can't make third <laughs> sister third worst. <laughs> No, I want you to offer another retraction and apology to Third Sister. No, wait, Third Sister, Third Worst. It makes sense. Oh, it's like it's written in the stars. The, the Force wills it. They're, they're terrible, man. The fact that Divine Influence is, like, based off of what stance they're in and isn't just you get both of these things is so <laughs> bad. Well, it's not them getting it, it's other things getting it, isn't it? Yeah, but the fact that, like, the, the other things are reliant on what stance R2 and C3 go well, in. And also, awful. it's only one of the... So Ewok scouts get scale on one yeah. of the stances, and then on the other stance, Ewok warriors have steadfast. It's like, what, not everyone just gets... It, like, completely independent of the stance and just go, whilst within four of this unit, scouts get scale, warriors get steadfast, like... Well, let's be honest, it would make them better, but it probably still wouldn't pull them out of D. <laughs> okay, guys, there we go. That is going to be our list. 23 units that we've broken down there, Quinn, which is a lot more. I think it's probably doubled probably, from, yeah. uh, from the last time that we did it. And it's nice to see that some of the old favourites are still up there. There are two characters, Quinn, from the core box three characters from the first release wave that are in S tier. Um, so there is definitely no power creep in this game at the moment. 
Um, it's what unless, I would. <laughs> you know, you, you think about the £90 box for two models that has, you know, two ridiculously overpowered characters. I don't know if that's power, I don't know if that's power creep, but um but yeah, I think money creep. <laughs> I think it's fair. Um based on this Quinn, just like as a side note, we're at the two hour mark now almost. Maybe not for you guys, I've got to edit it down, but um wh where are you sort of saying the the because it's interesting, right? It's like you've got Galactic Republic, very near the top, you know, top tier, separatists at the top. Galactic Empire, you know, are, are up there as well. Yeah, they're, they're definitely up. Like, coming. you know, that there isn't, there isn't really anyone being left behind at the moment. I don't think, um, other than the very, very new factions that need another two or three squad packs to to boost them out. I'd argue at the moment because of what AMG have chosen to release. The Rebel Alliance is definitely behind the curve at the minute, but I think all that changes once we start to get things like Han and Chewie, like uh, the Ghost Chewy. Crew, like yeah. Well, once we start getting some proper rebels and not meh teddy bears, like they'll actually be a faction that are worth playing. For, yeah. for me, at least, I know some people adore Ewoks and they should be committed to psych wards, but you know. Well, uh, a bad batch gonna be multi. A bad batch gonna be. Uh, Probably multi era. Um, I've not like watched the latest season yet. I've yeah, so I've not. Know. I've not. I've only watched like, like half of the first episode. How much they interact but... with like the proper rebellion? Like they'll probably just be their own independent thing for me. Like yeah. so far, like obviously that is subject to change with what is being put out in the final season. Um, I yeah, couldn't. Like... I can't imagine that the final season will have influenced these characters. Will have been made designed a year and a half ago probably if not longer yeah. i don't think that what's going on now in bad batch is going to influence yeah and i think the characters too much um, generally they are probably not going to be rebel alliance they probably will have the scoundrel tag maybe just because you know yeah they do maybe work for hire, right mercenary rather than scoundrel yeah. I, I could definitely see that um yeah to be honest, I'm more interested in the Bad Batch when they are actually part of the Republic because I find them a lot more interesting there because yeah. they have Crosshair and Crosshair is the best one. So, you know, mm. Crosshair is the best member of the Bad Batch. You can't really argue He's otherwise. just clone but... Gar Saxon. What you want? You... <laughs> He's way... <laughs> For one, he has a personality which Gar Saxon doesn't. That is true. That is like... true. Name um, a defining trait of Gar Saxon. Go on. He'd be, he'd be, okay at shooting. <laughs> and the fact that you had to use the word "okay" there instead of "good" <laughs> just shows how little character Gar Saxon has. Um, but yeah, I think yeah, I think I do agree. I think Rebel Alliance right now at the moment are probably um, a little bit far behind. I would say probably, you know, for the ones. For the, for the squad packs that we've had that are like, this squad pack is X, I think the bounty hunters for me probably right now are the bottom of the pile. And, and yeah. what I mean by that is by running a, a not a pure bounty hunter list, but a bounty hunter folk, like taking Cad, Django, um, Aura Singh. Like for me, the bounty hunters work really well when you go, I'm going to pick that bounty hunter yeah, and put them in there, which is, almost like how bounty hunting works right like <laughs> it's almost like they are for hire um but yeah i i'm really excited queen about some of the stuff that we've got coming this year um this list in six months will have changed significantly once again um and yeah i think i think it's really really good and i think the game i've actually really been enjoying playing games of shatterpoint again yeah um, which is which is nice, right? And it's so, nice yeah. when you know, like the the content droughts end and like you know rainy season begins. <laughs> I know eventually there's going to be another drought and this channel will temporarily oh, yeah. die again. But you know, for now, well, that was that was more uh, that was a lot to do with my health as well. But yeah, AMG well, not releasing anything for fall downstairs. Then should you? <laughs> yeah, it was even before then. Um, 
But yeah, there we go, guys. We're going to leave it there. Let us know what you think down in the comment section below. I'm sure we've pissed off some of you. Um, I can't wait for all the comments hating the fact that I don't like R2-D2 and C-3PO. <laughs> I would have probably put them a little bit higher, but I'll let you... You were so passionate about it, Quinn, that, uh, you know, i let you do it. Um... Guys, I want to give a big shout out to all of our Patreon supporters. Thank you so much for supporting us over on Patreon. It really, really does mean the world. You can also join uh, the YouTube membership now as well. Just click the button. Again, there's some added benefits that you can get from that. But you don't need to do any of that to support the channel. You can do so just by hitting the like, uh, leaving a comment, subscribing, uh, and sharing the content. Uh, just engaging with it really, really does help um make sure you join the discord we're going to be announcing the new shatter point event in the next week or two uh we're sort of staggering the mcp and the shatter point so not everything's running at once uh so if you want to join it head on over and check that out again link down in the description below and as always guys it leaves me with just enough time to say stay well keep safe and until next time may the force be with you yo nub. welcome to